Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial on deep learning. This is our third video in our artificial intelligence and machine learning series. If you haven't checked out our first two videos, be sure to check them out because they kind of set the basis for our upcoming videos and this one too. So continuing on our topic, today we will be further delving into AI. We reach a subset called deep learning. Like I said, deep learning is a subset of AI. It's a part of AI to be more exact. It's an AI function that imitates the human's brain in processing data. And I know that sounds wicked cool, so let's get right into it. Deep learning is at the very forefront of AI and its applications are mind blowing. Many inane and boring tasks can be outsourced to machines and deep learning. And in this way, the human resource can be utilized to its maximum. So in short, computers and deep learning do all the heavy work. Deep learning can be used in classification, analysis, prediction, a ton of things. So what exactly is it that gives deep learning the advantage over machine learning? Why deep learning over machine learning? Well, in truth, both of them actually have their own strengths and both can be used for different kinds of problems. A major difference between the two is the problem solving approach. In conventional ML, the problem needs to be broken into separate parts. However, DL or deep learning is an end to end process. Or in short, you just gotta feed the kid, man. I'll give you an example. A sort of popular one. We'll be using the problem of multiple object detection. We'll have to detect where the object is in the image and what it is. Now, in typical ML, you break down the problem into object detection and object recognition. And both tasks have to be individually solved and coded. So for example, you could use a bounding box detection algorithm like GrabCut to isolate the object in the image. And then you'd use an SVM or a support vector machine with HOG to recognize the relevant objects. But as I said earlier, deep learning is an end to end process which means none of this splitting it into multiple parts hassle has to take place. In deep learning, you do not have to specify the features. The model learns on its own what is important and what is not. In machine learning, you have to feed the features into the algorithm. And problems can arise when new features pop up. And sometimes we don't know enough on the problem at hand to feed all the important features accurately. See, in deep learning, you can use the YOLO net, which is a deep learning algorithm. Now, in YOLO net, you would pass the image and it would give you the location along with the name of the object. However, deep learning requires massive amounts of data. And when small amounts of data are involved, ML models tend to be much more accurate. And another very important factor is infrastructure and execution time. Machine learning doesn't need as much computing power. Whereas deep learning needs a GPU for proper training. And usually deep learning models take a longer, much longer time to train as compared to machine learning models. So as you can see, both machine learning and deep learning have their own strengths and machine learning scientists should know when to use which. Google's TensorFlow is a famous deep learning framework. It makes the implementation of deep learning much more easier. Deep learning requires a lot of complex and big math. And frameworks like TensorFlow and Theano make it easier for the layman to be able to use, learn and implement deep learning without having to take a PhD in mathematics. TensorFlow was developed by the Google Brain team. Now TensorFlow is an open source library for numerical computation and large scale machine learning. 
TensorFlow is one of the most famous deep learning frameworks and is usually implemented in Python. Other famous frameworks are Theano, Cafe, Keras and PyTorch. In our tutorial series, we'll be focusing on TensorFlow a little bit more. Our next video will be on neural networks and how they work. We'll be explaining perceptrons at depth. The inner workings and functioning of a neural network took me a bit of time to understand. So I'll be trying my best to make it as clear as possible for you guys. So for those of you who haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button for everything AI. Hasta la vista, baby.